Welcome back to the tutorials for Spencer Specs. Um, this video will be your tutorial to go over this load card data information. Quickly, um, the first step we need to do here is to go into Brisnet and download our data file. So I'm going to click on this link and it will take that button and it will take me to the link for my Bris single data files. It will show me a listing of all the cards that are available to download. Anything that's got a blue down arrow I have already downloaded. Um, anything that does not have two lines through it is a preliminary file so it does not include at least one of the three characteristics of a program number, um, morning line odds, or wagering menu. And by program number, um, not always is post position one going to be program number one. If number two and three are a couple of entry, they're going to be one and one A and post position two, or post position one is going to be number two. So when the initial entries come out, you're going to see po post positions typically when you look at a past performance. The specs actually has functionality to go in and estimate what the program number will be. It will look for coupled entries and assign 1 and 1A one to the first coupled entry, 2 to B to the sec second coupled entry, and so on. 99.9% um, .9 of the time it's going to be correct, if not even maybe even closer to 100%. One caveat, it may assign 2B to the second horse in the second entry. Some tracks might assign that horse a 2X. Um, it's going to assign 1-1A, 2-2-B as Naira assigns their couplings, but like Philadelphia Parker Parks, uh, I believe, does 1-1-A, 2-2-X. So that 2-X horse will be listed as 2-B until you get the final number. What this does for you is it allows you to potentially go in and handicap earlier in the week if you'd like to. But especially, I have, we've probably all done this if we've handicapped for very long, is we've looked at a preliminary version of the daily racing form or Brisnet PPs, and it doesn't have the program numbers associated with them so you you go and you bet that one horse when he's actually the two horse because it was the one listed as with the number one next to him because that was his post position so you you go and play that horse and come to find out he's the two um, so this eliminates that possibility or reduces it to a very minute chance that somebody in a racing office somewhere if an ent part of a couple of entries scratches way early takes that coupling designation off in the next file that you download. So that may happen. I've never seen it happen, but I could perceive it going on. That being said, you can download this file. You can run your specs and set them up and use whatever functionality you like. You can then use that listing to go watch replays and add to your trip notes. You can load your pedigree information, all that stuff you can do earlier in the week. And then when this becomes a final file, you can go and just reload that file into the same copy of the specs and it will add the morning line odds and the program numbers for you. So um, makes it pretty efficient if you've got maybe you know time off on the weekends or you're watching Monday Night Football or, or doing something early in the week or maybe you don't work Monday and Tuesday and you'd like to kind of prep a bunch of things during the day on those days. Um, anyway, that's an option. What I'm going to do, well, what, I, what I wanted to also show you is if I click on this button, there's a green um, with a plus sign in the middle of it. That means that this file is available for me to download and I have not downloaded it. If I click on it, it turns red, which basically means it's in my cart. Now you see a negative sign means I want to if I want to take it out of my cart, I click on it and it's gone. So that's how I make the selection. Now I can click on any of these buttons that have a blue down arrow. That means I've already paid for it and it will automatically download the, that file. So I can click on it and it will open a tab and it will download that this Keeneland File, which is the file we're going to use. Alternatively, I could go up to my products and it would list me all of the products that I have in my that I purchased. And I can click on the down arrow here and it would also download the file. So those are the two ways that we can download our files. Let's go back to the specs. The second step is that I want to paste the data. So I click on paste data. I want to paste my data here. Now the problem you have is that the files that we download come in a .drf file. So if I go into into this, first of all you download it, it comes in a zip folder which if I try to load it, there's two ways you load the specs or the, the data from the specs and you can either associate the downloaded file with Microsoft Excel, which I have done, um, or if you've not been able to do that you can open it from the file open menu. So I'm going to show you both of those. Inside the zip folder I can go in and see that it has my Microsoft Excel, this X logo, this green 
means that the .drf files have been associated with Microsoft Excel. If I double click on that file, it's going to open it in Excel. Pretty slick and handy. I would highlight column A, right click, choose copy, go back to the specs, right click and paste values. Okay, So I can do that. That's one way. The other way is that I would need to go into, let me close out this file, I can go into this folder, the zip folder, copy or cut the file and paste it back to a folder that I need to. Because for Microsoft Excel, we can go into a file open functionality, but it can't get inside a zip folder. Zip is a compressed folder. Microsoft Excel cannot decompress that folder. So it can't get in, can't see that file. So you have to copy it and move it out manually to its own file if you would like to use it. So I've done that, I moved it out here. So I'm going to open it from there. Um, so I want to go to my download folder, which is where I have it. Choose all files, and you can see that I have this um, Keenland.drf. Now, because I'm, I'm showing you the example, and if I don't have that file associated, my .drf associated with Excel, I actually have done a little bit of prep and changed, downloaded that file and changed it to a .drfx. For illustrative purposes, you can see that it is not associated with Microsoft Excel. So if I double click or double click on that, it's going to bring me to a text import wizard. Excel is smart enough to know that this is some type of a text file. Now, because it does, you could go in and do a comma delimited open blah blah blah, but my specs have the functionality to convert that from a comma separated file into an Excel type document. So just choose, choose delimited and finish. And it's going to look exactly like what you did before. So I'm going to highlight that and copy it. Let me copy it. Sorry, I like keyboard shortcuts. Sometimes forget and move too quickly. Come back to my, my specs and I'm going to paste it and paste values. And when that's pasted in here, if I, if I were to get into the raw data or this paste data column or tab by accident, I can just click on this button. It'll take me back to the main menu. Um, so you can see that I've got this tab of information is here. Um, and it didn't take very long to get here. If I go back to, to my, like if I accidentally clicked on that button later on after I've set my specs up, I don't want to have to click on return to main menu and have it, because every time you click on this button, it goes and reformats a bunch of tabs in the specs to handle the number of races on that day's card. So it takes a little while. So if you just click on this button, it takes you back to the, the main menu. But for, for the one-time setup, you need to click on Return to Main Menu. Now, while this is running, I'm going to also go show you how to associate the .drfx file now with Microsoft Excel. So I'm going to click on that button while it runs. I'm going to go back to here. You'll see the .drfx, again, not associated. You right-click. You can choose Open with Microsoft Excel and always use this app to open DRFX files. Now, I'm going to wait to say OK until this is finished because if I try to send something to Excel while it's running through the macros that it, that it has running in the background, it can cause Excel to freeze up a little bit. So as soon as we see this screen in the background go back to the menu page, it will mean that the file is set up and ready to go. As soon as we do that, I'll click on this and it will show you that it will open it in Excel. So, so there it goes back to the menu, and, and there I have my Excel document. Now, let's say, let's pretend that I used a preliminary file. So now I want to go back and paste my, my final data file. I'll go back to my paste data, clear the contents. Obviously, it's clear contents for reposting the data file with morning line program numbers, if applicable. So if, if you ran the preliminary data through here first, and now you're coming back and running the final, then you need to clear this out. If you run the final through it the first time for that card, there's no reason to come back and repaste. Um, so I'll click on that button, it's going to just clear all the data out. I'll go back to the new file that I just downloaded. I'm going to highlight it, choose copy, go back to the specs, repaste, and I'm going to click on return to main and it's going to Read separate this out to a com to an Excel file from the comma separated data file that it that downloaded and take me back to the menu when it's done. 
Again, if I had done this and already ran all my pedigree information, it would be cross triangulating pedigree information back to this new data to make sure that, that it has matches. Um, and then the next step will be that we want to go in and load carryover data. So you can you can use the link that will take us to the carryover paste the, the location where we will paste the carryover data. Um, right here, and in this tab, you, you want to paste it in the in the field that it op that it's open in. But right here's the the link to the Equibase carryover corner or carryover listing. So it will open it up in Equibase. Click on it. Hit Control and A. So push Control down on your keyboard and then A, and it will highlight everything. That's a select all. Right click. Choose copy, go back to your specs, go to this first page, right click, choose paste special, and away we go. Now we go back to the main menu, there is a pick six carryover, um, at least as of today, the day that I'm running it, which is a couple of days in advance, and there are at least one trip note available. So I've made trip notes, and there is at least one trip note. We will talk about those a little bit more in detail as we go through the rest of these tabs. All right, look forward to talking to you later. Thanks.